Hey guys, Dwayne England, Potsky Bait Company, and today we're here in the Bait Lab and we are going to cure some coho eggs that were recently harvested out in the salt water. So these eggs for me are ideal uh, when it comes to using fire cure. Fire cure is a sulfite based cure and uh, we get a lot of questions about the differences in, in cures as in Baraxyl Fire versus uh, the fire cure and, and truly what the difference is and when it comes down to it, fire cure is engineered to cure uh, eggs or baits that we use to, you know, fish for salmon. It is a sulfite based cure. It has some bite stimulants in there because of the sulfites that entice salmon to bite. But really what are sulfites? Sodium sulfite, for example. So been used in the food industry for years. They use it in making wine, preserving foods, whatnot. It, uh, it helps retain color in foods and vegetables and whatnot, fruit. Um, and it also helps preserve them for a longer shelf life or in the refrigerator. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't allow them to, you know, wither and shrink and shrivel. So it, it's not a, a cure that tightens and uh, toughens, uh, you know, when it comes to application on eggs. Um, you know, eggs are a biodegradable product in that they will break down in the skin uh, does break down and so when it comes to utilizing a sulfite based cure if you're looking for something that's going to toughen your eggs or toughen your skein uh, fire cure or sulfite based cures that's not what the intent is what the intent is is to uh, add color add bite stimulants actually uh, it helps preserve the eggs because of the sulfites in there uh, gives a longer shelf life they do fish better than obviously raw roe um, and for all the reasons, uh, you know, mentioned, they, they, uh, they add bite stimulants to the eggs with the, uh, with the sodium sulfite or the sulfites. It's the sulfites and the sodium and also the, uh, the sulfites have um, some other properties in there that, again, ideally for preserving food, but for some reason, stimulate fish or especially salmon to, uh, to bite. So... How do we use it uh, when it comes to applying sodium sulfite based cure or fire cure to your eggs? First of all, you do have to be careful that you do not use too much. A little goes a long ways and you can over cure your eggs to where you add too much of a sulfite based cure. And persons like to refer to that as burning your eggs. Really what you're doing is you're just putting way too much on there and it continues to help preserve the eggs. And how does it do that? It just continues to keep them soft and gooey and uh, they then tend to get weakened. The, the eggs pop and the juice uh, drains out. So yeah, if you wanna to refer to that as burning your eggs, okay, fine. But really you're just over curing them to the point of where they just continue to leach out all their fluid. So a little goes a long way when using fire cure. First of all, we got to take a look at the eggs. And for me, uh, again, uh, somewhat immature eggs, uh, fish harvested out in the saltwater, lower uh, main stem rivers in your area um, versus fish that are harvested way up in the tributaries and much more mature. So we like these eggs that are smaller, tighter, and a lot of skin around the eggs. You can look at these eggs, they are, you know, skin on three quarters of the egg. The underside of the egg is opening up, but there's a lot of skin on here, so they will stay together very well when using a sulfate based cure. This skein here, we still got a little bit of blood left in there, so we wanna get that blood out. Now these eggs are a few days old, they've been in the fridge. I recommend anytime you can, cure your eggs the day that you harvest them or the very next day. 48 hours, you can still get it done. 72 hours, we're kinda of pushing it. Beyond that, the eggs tend to start getting a smell to them, so the sooner you can cure your eggs, the fresher they are, the better your bait will turn out. The blood begins to coagulate in here a little bit and it gets hard to move or push down the, the vein. So we can move this blood just a little bit. We're probably not gonna get it all out of there, but we're gonna get some of it out of here. And I can cut that vein a little bit there with the, with the knife. I can move that blood along and I can wick that away with the paper towel. And again, we're gonna get as much out of here as we can, but I'm not gonna spend a tremendous amount of time. The blood is out pretty much uh, on the other skeins. This one here, we left to just show how to get that blood out. Again, this blood will come out a lot easier if you do it within the first day or so of harvesting the fish. And remember, you know, to take care of your fish, take care of your eggs, always bleed your fish when you're at the river or wherever it is you harvest your fish and um, your eggs are gonna turn out better in the long run. So 
We got the blood out of majority of these eggs. Now, these are pretty tight skeined, and I want to open them up to make sure I get the cure in there. So uh, it doesn't take much, you know, a sharp knife here, and I can put a little cut on that, which is going to open these up. So we're going to butterfly them a little bit, just kind of run it down here and slightly open those. Okay, not, not really popping a whole lot of eggs. Really, a very uh, sharp knife gets it done pretty well. So I want to open these up just like that. Again, don't have to cut it all the way through. We can leave it intact, and uh, we're gonna, it's going to allow us to get a good amount of cure in these eggs. So we'll just get them all opened up here, and then we'll get ready to add some cure. So <clears throat> now that we got our eggs, for the most part, blood-free, now if I uh, read on the container here that the fire care comes in, talks about curing our eggs in a jar or a bottle. And so I'm going to keep it real simple today. We're going to go ahead and do some of these eggs up in a jar and show you what that looks like. So I can't really fit the size of these skeins into uh, my jar. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to cut them into a little bit smaller pieces here. Okay. And then we're going to apply some cure to them. So just something like that does a really nice job. Now we're going to sprinkle on a little cure. Remember, a little bit of fire cure goes a long way. I don't really need a tremendous amount of cure on here. So we're going to sprinkle the top side of these a little bit here. Okay, not a ton. And I'm going to just kind of lay that down into the jar. All right. And put another one in there. Now I can go ahead and sprinkle a little bit on the top side of that. All right, and drop this one in there. A little more care. Now for me, this is a little bit of a, somewhat of a messy way to do this, though it does work very well. We're just adding a little bit of cure. Again, not trying to over cure these. Just get a little on there. As these begin to juice out, we're gonna have uh, a good amount of juice building up in the jar, and that allows me to rotate these around and, uh, you know, distribute the cure evenly and get the, get the juices surrounding all the eggs and they all begin to cure evenly. So now I can just kind of, you know, tumble these around and I could fill the jar up about three quarters of the way, but I'm going to leave room in there so that I can move these eggs around and get the, get the cure going to where it begins to juice the eggs out very well. So uh, I'm going to set those off to the side. That is one method to do it. Now, I'm going to leave these at room temperature. You know, for me, it's uh, 24 hours. 12 can kind of, you know, you're, you're getting there, but 24 hours at room temperature, I'm talking 45 to, say, 65 degrees, garage, mud room, in the house, what have you. Uh, room temperature, that allows these eggs and the pores to stay opened up. The juice gets drawn out of the eggs, and then the eggs need to draw that juice back in. That completes the curing process. After 24 hours, when the eggs have reabsorbed all that juice and they're really plump, I can go ahead and put them in the fridge. I can freeze them. There's a number of options I can do. I can, I can fish them, okay? They're going to be cured. They're going to be ready to go. So do not put them in the fridge too early. I leave them at room temperature a good uh, 24 hours. So uh, now with these other eggs, we got them opened up. And for me, you know, I'll use the jars from time to time. I do like the bag method in that, it allows me to do a few extra things to my eggs. So these two skeins, I'm going to leave uh, full length. We're going to add a little bit of the fire cure onto them. All right. And just on the egg side here, again, it doesn't take a lot. So I don't want to over cure them. And then I'm going to take my plastic bag, my gallon Ziploc. I put an FC on there for fire cure. Then I can just pick these up on the paper towel. Drop them right on in there. For me, it's a lot cleaner method. I'm not trying to squeeze things through a jar. Um, it just seems to, you know, get get into the bag a heck of a lot easier. Now, I want to leave a little bit of uh, air in the bag, and that's going to allow me to begin to roll those around. So I can look at that and say, hey, I want a little bit more here on there. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more. Now, I can leave these in the bag and do the same exact thing. Roll them around, as you can see, begins to juice out here uh, and, and get, that, get that cure worked around there evenly. 
So I can leave them in the bag and toss them around, do the same thing. One thing I like to do with these, um, with these eggs that I put in the bag, which is simply some fire cure on there, is I will add just a little bit of our egg juice nectar, okay? Um, I just like a little extra juice in there. It helps volumize the eggs when they reabsorb that juice. And uh, I think it helps uh, get the cure spread throughout the eggs even a little bit better. The other thing I like to do is I like to add color. I like to use the fire dye, the dark red fire dye. And I put a little bit of that in here. And as that juice begins to form, and one thing you can do is you can blow a little bit of air in these bags just to give you a little bit more room, okay? And so now I have some added color in there and I have some a little bit of extra juice and it makes it really easy to tumble these around and get that cure distributed evenly, okay? Now I'm gonna let that bag sit in the room 12 to 24 hours. One thing I'm gonna do every couple hours though, I wanna come out here and I wanna, uh, during daylight obviously, or daytime, I wanna roll this around and keep that cure moving. I wanna get that juice, you know, enveloping all the eggs and everything to get uh, equal color, equal cure, all the eggs look the same, they volumize the same. I do the same with my jarred eggs as well. I'm gonna bring these, I'm gonna you know, take those a couple times uh, throughout the day, every few hours. I'm gonna eat, gently kind of shake that around and you can see the juice beginning to form in there. So it doesn't take long for those to start curing. But uh, we, can, we can tumble these around and get that equal distribution. That really helps get the eggs going. The other thing I can do with my jarred eggs, because I do like that extra color, once they begin to cure and producing that extra juice, I can add in here uh, some, some fire dye that is going to now um, be easier to get equal distribution on all the eggs. If I do it right away when I put the cure in before the eggs start to juice, they're a little sticky, a little tacky, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of dye on just a few pieces of egg. So I like to wait till they start juicing out. And then I add that dye in there. And again, by rolling them around periodically throughout the day and getting everything evenly cured, the color will distribu distribute evenly on all the eggs. All right, with my bag method, um, after about a full day, you know, 18, 24 hours, again, and this is completely uh, cured, uh, one thing I like to do is I'm gonna roll all the air out of the bag, and then I'm gonna set this in the refrigerator, okay? And I could do multiple skeins in a bag, that's the other thing, these are just two small skeins. I could put six or eight of these in here and do a larger volume of eggs, especially in the gallon Ziploc. So I can do six or eight skeins in there of, you know, out of coho, uh, for example. Now I'm gonna set those in the fridge after 24 hours, and I'm gonna let those sit for at least a day, and then it really ensures that the cure process is complete, all right? So we got a day in the garage, uh, at room temperature, another day in the fridge, letting it uh, continue to absorb and finalize. Now those eggs are cured, and I can do a couple, several things with them. I can freeze them, I can, uh, you know, get them, uh, get them in a container ready to go fishing, uh, or I can leave them in the fridge for a week or two even if I choose to, knowing that I'm gonna fish in the next few days. So just a few finer points on proper method of using fire cure. Remember again, it's a sulfite-based cure. It will not toughen your skein. So if you're fishing with, or you know, harvesting eggs that are more mature, uh, maybe try a different method that I'll, I'll show you on a different video, but uh, the fire cures, Works fantastic, great bite stimulants, uh, really does well for fall salmon, and uh, guaranteed to put fish in the box. Give it a try. All right, that's gonna do it for us today here in the Bait Lab. Thanks for watching. Kotsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potsky.com. And as a thank you for watching Potsky Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.